He's in league with the devil. <laughs> In version 1.1 uh, of Turn 2 Icarus, a large number of uh, modulation capabilities have been added. Uh, this tutorial refers to uh, version 1.1 or higher. You can check out if you got the, uh, this version by clicking on the help button and show version info. If this uh, menu is not available, you're on an older version and you should update. You can download the update uh, for free from tone2.com. Uh, in Icarus, there are modulation sources like the envelope or the LFOs, and there are modulation targets. Usually, those targets are the knobs. In the matrix, you can route a modulation source to a target and define the amount of modulation. Click in the slot and select the source. Here you can uh, see a large menu popping up. Uh, here you can choose from the envelopes, the LFOs, uh, noise sources, MIDI sources like mod wheel, pitch wheel, aftertouch, velocity. 14 additional DK envelopes, which always trigger when you hit the note, and a large number of free-running LFOs. The modulation targets are usually the knobs which are visible within the interface. But it's also possible to route to other modulation sources, like uh, the envelopes, or matrix slots, or effects. To build a simple vibrato, I choose uh, an free-running LFO with uh, 5 Hz and route it to fine and set the emo modulation amount. Now we can switch on the filter, add some resonance. and pick the mod wheel and route it to filter cutoff. When I change the amount, you can see that the filter cutoff knob has a sector. And if the sector gets red, you know that the modulation amount is clipping. So I set it to an amount which prevents the clipping. <coughs> use the mod wheel for changing the cutoff of the patch. A further very comfortable way of assigning modulation to a knob is the right click method. I prepare the patch with a vocal filter and we want to modulate the resonance. To do this I click with the right mouse button to the resonance knob. A menu opens. Within this menu, you can choose from a large number of different modulation sources, like LFOs, free-running LFOs, envelopes, MIDI sources, noise sources, or the ability to remove the modulation. In this case, I choose LFO1 and assign it to resonance. After this, a new matrix entry has been created. It uses LFO1 and routes it to resonance. Around the resonance knob you can see a white sector which has appeared now. This white sector represents the amount of modulation which is applied to the resonance knob. You can also use this crosshair, click on it and move the mouse button to change the modulation amount. Now let's listen to it. <coughs> Use your mouse and hover over a knob. Then a blue box appears. The blue box over the resonance here tells us that LFO1 is assigned as a modulator. To remove the modulation, there are also two options. 
The first one is that you simply set the modulation target or source to off. The second possibility is that you right click on the knob and then choose remove modulation. Here you can see that the matrix entry has disappeared and resonance is not longer modulated. The third method of assigning a modulator to a target is the drag and drop method. There are several drag and drop sources available. The LFOs, the envelopes, the mod wheel and the pitch wheel. You notice a valid drag and drop source when the mouse cursor changes from the normal arrow to a finger. I click on the LFO, hold my mouse button down and move my mouse over the resonance. A line which connects the LFO with the resonance appears. When it's green, it's a valid target. When it's red, it's no valid target. Now I release my mouse button. A new matrix entry has been created. LFO 1 now is routed to the resonance. Icarus comes with a very large number of different LFOs. You can select the LFO shape by clicking on the waveform display and selecting one of the different LFO waveforms. Furthermore, it's possible to use the mouse wheel to select them. Every LFO waveform can be morphed with the shape function. Speed defines the LFO frequency. Key defines the key tracking of the LFO frequency. When it is turned right, a high key will result in a faster LFO and a low key will result in a slower LFO. Phase defines the starting phase of the LFO when a key is pressed. If you switch on the BPM LED, the current LFO speed will synchronize with your host's BPM rate. This is useful for wobbles. If the trigger LED is switched to on, the LFO of every single voice will re-trigger when you hit note on. If the LED is switched to off, a monophonic LFO will be used for all voices. This monophonic LFO will re-trigger after one second if no key is pressed. This is useful especially for pets. The ENV LED turns the LFO into an envelope. The LFO shape is played for a single time and then stops. You can create your own LFO shapes by using the STEP LFO. Click on the display and use your mouse to draw your own shapes. You can use the shape knob to change the smoothness between your steps. It's very easy to create a transgate sound. Simply click on the drag area of the step LFO, hold your mouse button down and route it to volume. A matrix entry is created which routes the step LFO to volume. But you cannot only use the step LFO for creating trans gates. You can also route it to other targets like the filter cutoff. This makes the step LFO more flexible than traditional trans gates.